At the beginning of the aviation age, the airplane had one mission, staying in the air. The first flyer, like the Wright Brothers' bicycle designs, depended on the operator's ability to sense changes in attitude and to adjust the plane's controls to keep it stable and aloft. As the speed and altitude of planes increased, they quickly outpaced the pilot's ability to react to the ever-increasing sensory load. Air Force engineers at McCook Field in Dayton, Ohio, took on the challenge of developing better tools to sense and communicate what was happening with the aircraft and its environment. This formative time in aviation history brought about the development of aircraft instrumentation, bank indicators, altimeters, airspeed gauges, and other now standard instruments were developed. World War I introduced new tasks for aircraft and new challenges for aircraft engineers. The war ushered in the age of air-to-ground bombing, air-to-air -air combat, reconnaissance, transport, and other vital military missions. These missions required the ability to see farther navigate over long distances, and communicate with the ground and other aircraft. Research and development of instrumentation and sensors continued in earnest at McCook Field and the Signal Corps Radio Laboratory in New Jersey. Both moved to Dayton's Wright Field in 1931. In the lead up to World War II, Air Force research yielded improved radio and navigation aids, the Army's first ground-based radar system, improved bomb and gun sites, and aerial radar. As instrumentation became more complex and sensors increased information flow into the cockpit, Air Force engineers faced the daunting challenge of helping pilots make effective use of all the data available. In World War II, bomber designs addressed this by assigning crew members to specific tasks. Cold War aircraft designs tended to minimize cabin space decreasing room for crew members, and thereby increasing the task load for the pilot. By the mid-1950s, airplanes such as the F-4 Phantom were designed to fly nearly every type of combat mission. The sensor load on the pilot was deemed so demanding, a second crew member was necessary. The next generation of airplane design brought a new emphasis on pilot effectiveness and aircraft ease of use. Although the F-15's cockpit is still packed with gauges and instrument readouts, most pertinent information is projected onto its heads-up display. And like the F-16 after it, all vital cockpit functions are accessible by buttons and switches on the throttle and control stick. When the Air Force fielded the F-16, it utilized advanced solid-state radar and other sensors. During its service life, the F-16 has been upgraded to use infrared and optical sensors laser targeting devices, and high-speed communication and data links. All of these sensors are fed to the pilot through the heads-up display and the large multifunction cockpit displays. The United States Air Force's fifth-generation fighter extends the pilot's ability to sense outside the aircraft even further. The F-35 employs the next step in pilot sensor communication, sensor fusion. Simply put, the F-35 has the ability to integrate input from its radar, distributed camera system, electrical optical targeting system, and communication navigation identification system into a single integrated picture. This fused picture is then projected directly onto the visor of the F-35 pilot, radically simplifying the cockpit of the fighter and easing the pilot's cognitive workload. Sense. From the early instrumentation of the Wright brothers to the fused sensor picture of the latest fifth-generation fleet, AFRL's research excellence has extended what the pilot can feel, hear, and see.